you know, the people of Chicago uh, have not seen any uh, any improvement in the crime epidemic. And now we have this migrant epidemic that is now devolving into a crime epidemic. The state of Chicago is the next location battling the migrant crisis due to many factors regarding welfare. While Texas has been in the news for a while now over its drastic war against immigrants, the state spilled some of its migrants to Chicago. In 2022, Chicago started accommodating migrants and in present times, an immigration crisis looms. From migrants finding it difficult to find jobs and shelter to an increase in crime rates, Chicago State might soon be forced to follow the path of Texas in limiting migrants. The Migrant Crisis in Chicago it all begins at the southern border of the United States, where officials faced an overwhelming influx of migrants. Reports indicated that each day per week, Border Patrol processed more than 10,000 migrants, leaving them struggling to cope with the sheer numbers. The situation became dire, with law enforcement officers in border towns like Maverick County, Texas, feeling the strain. The deductions were that the immigrants are looking for law enforcement officers wherever it is. They just want to make sure they get processed, and they know it's going to be somebody from the immigration, like Border Patrol or CBP, but they want to be processed and taken up north. As the situation intensified, Texas Governor Greg Abbott took matters into his own hands. He embarked on a controversial mission to send migrants north to so-called sanctuary cities, with Chicago being one of the primary destinations. A plane carrying over 120 migrants flew from the U.S.-Mexico border to Chicago under the direction of Governor Abbott. This move has sparked outrage and condemnation from various quarters, including the White House. In response to Governor Abbott's actions, the White House issued a statement accusing him of using migrants as political pawns and neglecting their well-being. Governor Abbott leaves migrants on the side of the road in the dead of winter, installs razor wire, making it more dangerous for Border Patrol to do their jobs, and promotes extreme laws that will make communities in Texas less safe. Governor Abbott is not interested in solutions. He only seeks to use people as political pawns. The controversy surrounding Governor Abbott's decision comes at a time when the conditions facing migrants flown up from the southern border are under increased scrutiny. Images of overcrowded shelters and stories of hardships faced by these individuals have captured the attention of the nation. As the controversy unfolds, questions arise about the well-being of the migrants once they arrive in Chicago. The city's cold winters pose a significant challenge for those who are unaccustomed to such harsh conditions. Many of these migrants are experiencing this kind of cold for the first time. Chicago's cold specifically is pretty unpredictable. There were days in October when people were sleeping outside of police stations and tents, seeking refuge from the freezing temperatures. The city of Chicago, along with various organizations and individuals, has been trying to provide assistance to the migrants. However, the task of ensuring their safety and well-being becomes more challenging due to the lack of proper winter clothing and the difficulty in keeping track of their whereabouts. When migrants come outside of the shelters, they are often ill-prepared for the cold weather. Many are seen wearing flip-flops, short sleeve shirts, and shorts. The city has designated landing zones for buses transporting migrants, but some buses have been impounded for not following these designated areas, leaving migrants stranded and unsure of where to go. It is important to note that these buses were hired by Governor Abbott to bring the migrants to Chicago. As the city of Chicago grapples with the influx of migrants, it becomes evident that they are facing resource shortages. While the city and state have allocated funds for the migrant crisis, they heavily rely on the federal government to provide additional support. The city has hired various vendors to assist with the crisis. These vendors have received substantial funding with almost $100 million allocated in the last 12 months. However, the budget for the next fiscal year falls short of what is needed, leaving the city dependent on state and federal assistance. The mayor of Chicago has been actively seeking additional funding from the federal government, making multiple trips to Washington, D.C., alongside other mayors facing similar challenges. The hope is that these funds will help alleviate the strain on the city's resources and provide the necessary support for the migrants. The situation in Chicago serves as a stark reminder of the complexities and challenges surrounding immigration. With over 13,000 asylum seekers currently residing in city shelters, the financial strain on Chicago is reaching unprecedented levels. Since October 2022, Chicago has spent a staggering $1.945 billion on migrant-related vendors. These vendors play a crucial role in providing essential services and support to the asylum seekers residing in the city's shelters. 
years. However, this mind-boggling figure does not even include the cost of city agencies and their work on the migrant mission. One vendor that stands out in terms of expenses is Favored Healthcare Staffing, a Kansas-based company. They have received an astonishing $126 million since the mission started. The majority of this cost is covered by the state, with the remainder split between the city and the federal government. To put this into perspective, the city recently amended their contract with Favored Healthcare Staffing for the second time. The new contract is worth approximately $150 million over the course of one year. It is worth noting that this amount is the same as the entire fiscal year's allocation in the city's budget. In an effort to mitigate the financial strain, the city has been actively seeking ways to save money. One area where they have made some progress is in reducing food costs. By utilizing new vendors, the city has managed to bring down the daily food cost per person from $1.22 to approximately $1.16. While this may seem like a step in the right direction, it is merely a drop in the bucket considering the overall financial impact of the crisis. City leaders have been engaged in ongoing discussions with the state and county to develop a long-term plan to address the financial challenges posed by the migrant crisis. They are exploring various options, including the establishment of new shelters both inside and outside of Chicago, as well as potentially taking over the costs of existing shelters in the city. However, finding a sustainable solution remains a daunting task. The city continues to rely on the financial support from the state and hopes for the federal government to step in and alleviate the burden. Governor Pritzker has expressed his plans to provide around 2,000 beds for the migrants, but the exact location and timeline are still uncertain. As city leaders grapple with the immense financial strain, they are acutely aware of the need for a long-term solution. The cost of the migrant crisis in Chicago is not just a temporary burden, but a pressing issue that demands attention and action. The financial burden of the migrant crisis extends beyond the expenses associated with vendors. City agencies have been working tirelessly to provide essential services and support to the asylum seekers. However, these efforts come at a significant cost. One area where the city has had to allocate substantial resources is education for school-age new arrivals. Ensuring that these children receive a quality education is a priority, but it comes with its own set of challenges and expenses. The cost of educating school-age new arrivals is not limited to classroom materials and teacher salaries. It also includes additional support services such as language instruction and cultural integration programs. These services are crucial in helping these children adapt to their new environment and succeed academically. The exact amount spent on education for school-aged new arrivals is not explicitly stated in the available information. However, it is undoubtedly a significant expense that adds to the overall financial strain on the city. As the number of asylum seekers continues to rise, so does the demand for educational resources. Chicago's schools are faced with the task of accommodating an increasing number of students who may have unique needs and require additional support. The city's commitment to providing a quality education for these students is commendable, but it comes at a cost. The funds allocated to education for school-aged new arrivals are part of the larger financial burden that Chicago is grappling with. While the city is doing its best to manage the expenses, the sheer scale of the migrant crisis makes it challenging to find a sustainable solution. The cost of education is just one piece of the puzzle, and city leaders are actively seeking ways to alleviate the financial strain. In the midst of these challenges, discussions are ongoing with the state and county to develop a long-term plan. The goal is to find a solution that not only addresses the immediate needs of the migrants, but also ensures the long-term financial stability of the city. One potential solution that is being explored is the establishment of new shelters both inside and outside of Chicago. By expanding the capacity to accommodate asylum seekers, the hope is to alleviate some of the strain on the city's resources. However, the logistics and costs associated with setting up new shelters are complex. It requires careful planning, coordination with various stakeholders, and significant financial investment. City leaders are weighing the pros and cons of this option to determine its feasibility. Another potential solution being considered is for the city to take over the costs of existing shelters in Chicago. This would involve assuming financial responsibility for these facilities, which are currently funded through a combination of state and federal contributions. By taking over the costs of shelters, the city would have more control over the allocation allocation of resources and could potentially streamline operations to reduce expenses. However, this would also place a greater financial burden on the city's already strained budget. The city is hopeful that the state will continue to provide financial support, and they are also looking to the federal government for assistance. The federal government's involvement would help alleviate the burden on the city's budget and provide much-needed relief. However, the exact level of federal support and the timeline for its implementation remain uncertain. City leaders are advocating for increased federal funding to ensure that the
the financial burden is shared more equitably. As these discussions continue, city leaders are also exploring ways to optimize existing resources and cut costs where possible. The recent efforts to reduce food expenses by utilizing new vendors are just one example of these cost-saving measures. While these measures may provide some temporary relief, they are not a long-term solution. The financial strain on the city remains significant, and finding a sustainable path forward is paramount. The rise of crime among migrants. While the state did not let up on the measures to assist immigrants and cater to the influx, there have been reports of criminal activities perpetuated by apprehended migrants. A wave of migration brought in a diverse population, seeking better opportunities and a chance at the American dream. However, amidst the hopes and dreams, a dark underbelly began to emerge. Headlines screamed of rising crime rates with a particular focus on crimes committed by migrants. Robberies, assaults, and even homicides became alarmingly frequent. The city was in the grip of fear, and the authorities struggled to keep up with the escalating violence. Overwhelmed by the surge in criminal activity, the Chicago Police Department found themselves facing an uphill battle. Limited resources and a lack of understanding of the unique challenges posed by migrant communities hindered their efforts to combat the crime wave effectively. We were dealing with a whole new set of challenges. Language barriers, cultural differences, and a lack of trust from the community made it difficult to gather information and solve crimes. It was like trying to navigate a maze blindfolded. We needed specialized training and resources to address the specific issues faced by migrant communities. As the 1970s turned into the 1980s, the situation only worsened. Gang violence began to grip the city, with rival factions vying for control of territories and engaging in brutal turf wars. Gangs comprised of both local and migrant members became a significant contributor to the rising crime rates. Drug trafficking, extortion, and drive-by shootings became their modus operandi, leaving innocent bystanders caught in the crossfire. The 1990s, brought a glimmer of hope as community organizations and law enforcement agencies began to collaborate in an effort to combat the escalating crime. Programs aimed at providing support, education, and job opportunities for migrants were implemented, offering a chance for a better future. Fast forward to the present day, and Chicago continues to grapple with the migrant crime issues that have plagued it for decades. While progress has been made, the battle is far from over. According to recent statistics, crimes committed by migrants still make up a significant portion of the overall crime rate in the city. Robberies, drug-related offenses, and gang activity remain persistent challenges that law enforcement and community leaders are working tirelessly to address. One of the most prevalent crimes associated with the surge of migrant crimes is theft. Pickpocketing, shoplifting, and burglaries have become all too common, leaving residents feeling violated and unsafe in their own neighborhoods. Surveillance footage captured by businesses and homeowners has provided crucial evidence in identifying the perpetrators. These thieves often and target crowded areas, public transportation, and residential properties, taking advantage of unsuspecting victims. In February 2024, four Venezuelan migrants were arrested in Chicago for robbery. This unpleasant incident brought the issue of migrant crime to the forefront. The Chicago Police Department wasted no time in apprehending the suspects, charging them with robbery, aggravated battery, and strangulation. According to reports, the incident took place on a CTA train in the 2000 block of South Canary Avenue. It was a seemingly ordinary day for the passengers, unaware of the danger that lurked among them. The victim, a 49-year-old man, boarded the train, unaware that his life was about to take a terrifying turn. Little did he know that he would become the target of a violent attack by these four migrants. As the train rattled along the tracks, the suspects closed in on their unsuspecting victim. With a sudden burst of aggression, the four migrants pounced on the man, overpowering him with their sheer force. They unleashed a brutal assault, beating him mercilessly. The victim fought back, but the odds were stacked against him. The attackers showed no mercy, strangling him until he lost consciousness. As the train continued its journey, oblivious to the horror unfolding within its confines, the suspects seized the opportunity to rob the defenseless man. They rifled through his pockets, snatching his belongings without a second thought. It was a brazen act of theft, fueled by their desperation and disregard for the law. The victim, now unconscious, lay helpless as the four migrants callously stripped him of his possessions. They showed no remorse, no empathy for the pain they had inflicted. To them, it was just another opportunity to satisfy their own selfish desires. Fortunately, the Chicago Police Department swiftly responded to the incident. Less than 45 minutes after the robbery and assault took place, the suspects were apprehended in the 2000 block of South Pulaski Road. The officers wasted no time in placing them into custody, charging each of them with robbery, aggravated battery, and strangulation. The identities of the suspects were revealed, their faces captured in the mugshots. These were the individuals responsible for the heinous act. 
four illegal immigrants from Venezuela. They had entered the country, taking advantage of the lax immigration policies only to perpetrate crimes upon innocent citizens. It is important to note that these individuals were living in a city-run migrant shelter. This raises questions about the effectiveness of the system in place. How did these migrants end up resorting to such violent acts? What led them down this path of criminality? These are questions that demand answers. The incident also highlights the larger issue of migrant crime in Chicago. With the influx of migrants, the city is grappling with the challenges of maintaining public safety. The incident involving the four Venezuelan migrants is just one example of the escalating problem. Law enforcement agencies in Chicago are facing significant challenges in dealing with migrant crime. One of the major hurdles they face is the lack of cooperation between local and federal authorities. Due to the city's sanctuary status, law enforcement is not allowed to check the legal status of individuals or work with federal organizations like ICE. This means that criminals can operate with relative impunity, knowing that they are shielded from deportation. The consequences of this lack of cooperation are far-reaching. It not only hampers the ability of law enforcement to effectively combat crime, but also puts innocent lives at risk. The incident involving the four Venezuelan migrants is a stark reminder of the dangers posed by individuals who are able to commit violent acts without fear of deportation or accountability. Furthermore, the revolving door of the criminal justice system exacerbates the problem. As we mentioned earlier, the suspects in this case were arrested multiple times before. However, due to the lack of consequences, they were released back into the public only to continue their criminal activities. This cycle of arrest and release not only undermines public safety, but also erodes trust in the criminal justice system. The implications of this incident and the broader problem of migrant crime are significant. Firstly, it raises concerns about the safety of the community. Innocent citizens should not have to live in fear of becoming victims of violent crimes committed by migrants. The incident serves as a wake-up call for policymakers and law enforcement to address the issue urgently. Secondly, the financial burden on taxpayers cannot be ignored. The city of Chicago has already spent a substantial amount of money addressing the migrant crisis, and the request for an additional $250 million to address the ongoing issues highlights the strain on public resources. It is crucial to find effective solutions that not only ensure public safety, but also allocate resources efficiently. Lastly, the incident underscores the need for comprehensive immigration reform. While it is important to provide support and opportunities for migrants, it is equally important to prioritize public safety and ensure that those who commit crimes are held accountable. Striking a balance between compassion and security is a complex task, but it is one that must be addressed to protect the well-being of both migrants and the communities they become a part of. Protests against the influx of migrants to have the government come in and dump 300 people right next door to me, it is not fair. In light of the rise in crime and the financial burden Chicago residents have been facing, many voiced out their desires for the state government to eradicate the growing complexities surrounding migrant issues. According to recent reports, the migrant crisis in Chicago has reached a boiling point, with residents expressing their rage over the allocation of over $1 billion of Chicago tax money to support the influx of migrants. This staggering amount has left American citizens feeling neglected and frustrated as they witness their own communities in need of resources. At a city council meeting, residents passionately voiced their concerns, demanding answers and accountability from their leaders. The city council meeting was a battleground of emotions as Chicago residents seized the opportunity to voice their concerns. The room was filled with tension and a palpable sense of anger. One resident took the floor, demanding answers from their leaders. We are tired of our hard-earned tax dollars being funneled into supporting illegal immigrants. Downtown has become a haven for illegal families, while our own communities are left struggling. We need resources, we need support, and we demand to know where our money is going. The frustration echoed throughout the room as residents expressed their disappointment in the neglect of American communities in favor of asylum seekers. The sentiment was clear. Chicago residents were fed up with the lack of attention given to their own communities. They questioned the priorities of their leaders and demanded accountability. The frustration reached its peak when one resident called for an end to any further funding for illegal immigrants, suggesting that city council members who were so concerned should donate their own salaries to the cause. The room erupted in applause as residents resonated with the call for accountability and a re-evaluation of priorities. The anger and frustration were palpable as Chicago residents felt unheard and neglected. The anger of Chicago residents was further fueled when Illinois Governor Pritzker shifted blame to Texas Governor Abbott, accusing him of intentionally planning the arrival of migrants to create chaos in Chicago. This accusation only added fuel to the fire, as residents saw it as an attempt
attempt to deflect responsibility and avoid addressing the concerns raised by the community. The meeting also saw powerful speeches from members of the black community who expressed their disappointment in the lack of support and representation they felt from their elected officials. The emotional speeches highlighted the deep-rooted issues faced by the black community, including unsolved murders, illegal evictions, and a bedbug problem in public housing. They called for change and demanded consideration for their concerns. The frustration expressed by the black community resonated with many in the room as they recognized the need for true representation and support. The meeting took an unexpected turn when some residents announced their decision to vote Republican in the upcoming elections. The anger and disappointment with the current Democratic leadership had reached a tipping point. It didn't take long before Mayor Brandon Johnson, the mayor of Chicago, implemented a policy directly addressing the influx of migrants. It was the 60-day eviction limit. Mayor Johnson announced this new policy after the city council approved his 2024 city budget. This budget, which includes a staggering $150 million allocated for migrants, raised eyebrows and sparked intense discussions within the city. The question on everyone's mind was how this funding would be utilized and what impact it would have on the growing number of asylum seekers seeking refuge. As the budget was being finalized, rumors started circulating about potential changes in the city's approach to housing migrants. Speculation grew and tensions ran high as the public eagerly awaited an official statement from Mayor Johnson. Finally, the day arrived. Mayor Johnson stepped up to the podium and made the shocking announcement of a 60-day limit on migrants staying in shelters. While the mayor provided few details during his announcement, he assured the public that more information would be forthcoming. He emphasized that the additional resources allocated in the budget would focus on increasing personnel to help migrants become self-sufficient. This raised questions about the long-term goals of the city in addressing the needs of asylum seekers. The decision to impose a time limit on migrants staying in shelters has ignited a fierce debate within the city. Supporters argue that it is a necessary step to ensure the efficient use of resources and to encourage migrants to seek permanent housing solutions. However, critics argue that this policy fails to address the underlying issues that force individuals to seek asylum and may lead to further hardships for vulnerable populations. The conversation surrounding funding for migrants extends beyond the city level. Governor J.B. Pritzker recently held a public discussion on state investments to help arriving migrants in Illinois. During this discussion, he emphasized the need for more assistance from the federal government, highlighting the challenges faced by states and local communities in addressing this federalized problem. As news of the 60-day limit spread, it ignited a firestorm of reactions within the community. Local officials, including city council members, expressed mixed opinions on the policy. Some supported the decision, arguing that it would help alleviate the strain on resources and encourage migrants to find more permanent housing solutions. Others, however, voiced concerns about the potential negative impact on vulnerable populations and the lack of long-term solutions being offered. The implications of the 60-day limit extend beyond immediate concerns about housing. Critics argue that this policy may inadvertently perpetuate a cycle of instability for asylum seekers, hindering their ability to fully integrate into society and find stability. They stress the need for comprehensive support systems that address the underlying issues driving migration and provide long-term solutions. It is important to note that Mayor Johnson's decision is not without its supporters. Proponents argue that the time limit is a necessary step to ensure the fair distribution of resources and to encourage migrants to actively seek permanent housing solutions. They believe that this policy will ultimately benefit both the migrants and the community as a whole. As the debate continues to unfold, it is clear that the implications of Mayor Brandon Johnson's decision are far-reaching. The reactions from local and state officials, advocacy groups, and the public highlight the complexities and challenges involved in addressing the needs of asylum seekers while balancing limited resources. Ultimately, Mayor Brandon's 60-day limit for migrants policy is projected to reduce migrants' overdue stay by March 2024. Stay plugged in for more in-depth information as the migrant situation continues to play out. We've got other interesting videos for you. Just hit the card on your screen. Adios.